one bus, 4,600 kilometers, 12 locations, over 60 days, with five pro free riders taking calculated risks that should not be imitated. Drop in, brought to you by Toyota Canada and Pinkbike.com. Share the ride. I think we have a really cool thing going here. I think it's just the start of something really special that's going to go on for a long time. Um, I think it's something that the sport of mountain biking desperately needs. All expenses were paid, so that was rad. We got to ride our bikes, go into heli. Like it's a dream come true for a lot of people. I definitely learned how smelly all my friends really are. <laughs> and uh, myself as well. It was just like sending out a big overgrown group of 12 year olds. <laughs> I knew I was sticking this one out. <laughs> Free food and a place to sleep for sure. <laughs> and I get to ride my bike. The good expectations I met for sure was being able to ride my bike every single day. Sean Denny is one of the most balanced people I've ever met in my whole life. The guy's a ton of fun. He's super intelligent. You know, just because he's a dreadhead, a lot of people write him off as being a young punk who's up to no good. But when you take the time to really get to know that kid, you really realize how much there is to him. Ah! Ah! <laughs> I want one of these. Everybody needs one of these. So fun to hang around with. Doing something funny and making antics, and I think he is the character of the trip. I'm like, gap to this electrical box from this concrete. Excuse me. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, we'll gap for more. <laughs> okay, Sean, what are you fucking doing here? Take <laughs> We're gonna gap from here to the electrical box and back wheel the pink pole. So, Sean, did you not read the sign on the green box that said, "Do not touch"? Yeah, I'm grounded. Yeah, yeah. Rubber. Yeah, if I was using metal tires or studs, then I would think twice about this. Sean and Dylan, those guys were the funniest thing about the trip. I've known Dylan probably four years. Since I moved to Nelson, he's probably the first guy that I met up with and hung out with and started to ride with. I don't. If it wasn't for Dylan, I don't think I'd be riding. Is he fighting? Getting ready. Are you mad at somebody? I'm just in training. Oh. Is that is that what the push-ups were for? Yeah, it's a decent push-ups. Those are pretty crazy push-ups you got there. Oh yeah. Look at those pecs. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> crazy man. He almost got you there, ready. man. Ready to ride. It's a cat with the one track mine. That guy loves riding his bike more than anybody I know. Let him ride. Let him do his thing. And uh and He's a happy guy. Just never stops with him. You always got to keep your eye on him. As the camera guys figured out fast that if you put the camera down, Dylan does something crazy. I'm gonna release you. Oh. <laughs> we got Darren. What's going on? How do you feel? Pretty good, man. I just wanna go ride my bike. <laughs> Quote of the day. I just wanna go and ride my bike. Byron's That's a really good, good guy. Good. 
He was like our dad. He says the right thing at the right time. Really focused and determined. He got on my nerves actually a few times. Just, sometimes I just did not care for his sense of humor. Do you have a key? Yeah. You have the key to the washroom and you're in the washroom. No, you have the key to the washroom. Why are you talking to me about it? It's right there, man. I didn't realize that he's such a great guy to hang out with. It's definitely really funny. He was always trying to keep it loose and uh, have lots of fun and everything. Well, Byron is one of the easiest guys to get along with on the bus right off the bat. Seems like he You've known the guy forever when you've just met him. I'm always smiling the whole time I'm going down. Obligated to ride as much as you possibly can every day if possible. But at the same time, you're still enjoying yourself. It's what I love to do. So it's pretty tough to say it's a job. Mike Kinrad, he is one of the most composed guys I've ever met. The guy's juggling a, a film project, he's juggling a girlfriend, you know, he's away from home, he's a member of the Narco Factory team. Kinrad's a different character. <laughs> he is somebody that's just able to get on his bike cold and just do stuff. He can puck on demand, he's our, our on-demand pucker. Guy likes to fly, he doesn't spend too much time on the ground on his bike. The most impressive thing off the bike would be sitting back watching Mike Kinrad spread his stuff from one end of the parking lot to the other. It's a chance of a lifetime and you know you gotta you gotta pounce on the opportunities because you don't know when they're gonna come along. Darren is a super keener, always eager to do stuff, wants to be good at it all so he's always out there riding street, always out there riding mountains. When he was out riding he was always on a mission to progress. He's a great guy, really uh, encouraging, uh, really fun to ride with. He's always about progressing. There's always some some other side to him that I think that people that we didn't really see. This is how we pray in the mountain biking industry. <laughs> Thank you, brothers. Woo! Oh! <laughs> Got me dirt, so dirt don't hurt. <laughs> There's been a few. Best meal we had on the trip was definitely in Rossland at Chris Lawrence's house. While we were out riding the trails, we packed them on some plastic bags and we picked a bunch of huckleberries. And he carried them down in his backpack while we were riding. When we went home, uh, Lunchbox Larry had whipped up a little something, something for supper. And this is our best meal by far, fresh huckleberry pie. We had some salmon with some huckleberries. All over it. It was it was so nice. It was amazing. Larry made up a little uh, huckleberry vinaigrette for the salad. You know, we had a huckleberry pie for dessert. I believe they even had huckleberries left over for pancakes the next morning. It's what it's all about for me. You know, it's about getting out in nature with your friends, going to get some exercise, picking some berries, and going to have a nice fat meal. Just get fat or get out. He can ride his bike. He can wear a mullet, and he can cook. <laughs> He's pretty talented boy. Ah! I'm the token tasty white kid that comes along and just tags along. I occasionally ride some street in the evening. Jeez, I've had Lyme disease for at least five years now. Everybody in all sports has Lyme disease of some sort. Uh, rock climbers and skiers and bikers. Lyme disease for us usually happens on highways and long drives, especially when you come into new places. Uh, and you look on the side of the road and you see something that looks rideable, but you know it probably isn't, but you still like to look and gaze and pretend it is. The person that impressed me the most on this trip was Sean Denny. He's a phenomenal rider, incredibly talented. He's got so many tricks up his sleeve. My name is Sean Denny. I'm just about to drop in.
it actually wasn't his riding that impressed me, it was his overall balance of life in general. He's a very talented kid. It's a sport I walked away from for a couple of years and getting back into it was, was great. So, I mean, it's opened up so many opportunities for me. Uh, being able to travel and ride my bike and meeting really cool people. Everybody I've met in this industry has been good and super nice people. There's not a lot of attitude, which I, which I like a lot. Most people wouldn't know this, but Sean is actually a ticketed welder. So he's, he's educated, he's smart, he reads, he writes. He's very artistic, he's very creative. He did a lot of reading. Uh, I know he did some writing, he did a lot of drawing. I'm the official team painter of the vehicle. I keep it looking good before all the races. Uh, Auto body paint jobs. Hornby Island I had the worst case of Lyme disease by far. I've been wanting to ride there for a long time and just going to that place, I mean, it's infinite. You can be a beginner to a pro. There's always something to push your, to push your fear level and to push your riding for sure there. There's everything you want, smooth rocks, gnarly rocks, gaps, everything. It's all in one place. So, I mean, it's like the biggest natural playground I think I've ever been to. I'd be in the middle of riding something in my my eyes would be veering off and looking at something else I could ride. I couldn't get enough of that place. I wish I was still there. I'm coming back next year. I'm gonna spend three days a year here. Sure. Cool. I think every trials rider in North America should come visit this place at least once a year. The funnest moment for me on the whole trip this summer definitely had to be driving the ferry from Balfour to Crawford Bay, just outside Nelson. Me and my brother Jed here, we'd, uh, we'd really like it if the two of us could come up and drive this thing. Are you are you sure this is the uh, captain that I'm speaking with? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, you dudes hooked it up. <laughs> Let's go. It's happening. We expected the standard answer of, you know, give your head a shake, guys. I don't think so, but we're gonna give you the fast crew chat here. All right. where we're heading there. That's where we're heading. That's yeah. our dock. Little movements. That's a pretty big movement. <laughs> that is a pretty big movement. Is that a pretty big movement? Yeah. Take one yeah, control of peace, man. <laughs> Not only did we get to drive the ferry, but we got to get it into some fishtails and stuff. People around here were giving the weirdest looks up there. Like, one guy's like, who's steering this thing? The other, the other captain from downstairs called up and asked if everything was OK. <laughs>
had some wild, wild stuff that was fun. Super tacky and it was super natural. There isn't one built up thing on there, so you just, you just ride it. Good to see everyone just get super stoked about their riding again and having a blast. Hard not to with a with a town like this. I mean, got so much going on here. You don't you don't really think anything's going on in Golden. I had such a ride. I planned many a weekends to come ride here for sure with my friends. The exposure line on the side of the ridge is the best part of that trail. You look over to your left and you just can't see anything. You can see you guys and it was just like. It was awesome. And that section is just gnarly. Yeehaw! That was awesome. I've never ridden down anything like that in my life. Good job, Darren. Man, that was fun. That's definitely definitely one of the best days of my life. That was insane. Holy. Lots of fun. <laughs> Okay, drop in. The craziest stomp I saw on the whole trip was Kinrad sticking his line, which is called for Josh and Nelson. It was a really like calculated kind of drop. And just when I landed, it felt so good to just ride down the tranny and carve out from it. And everyone was really stoked and happy for me. That was really cool to see him stomp that. It was very impressive. Easily the biggest error of the trip was Kinrad repeatedly. The guy just loves to chuck, and he is just a master chucker. The guy can stomp anything. So the guy can just do it totally cold, right out of the bus, right out of the truck, right out of bed, right after lunch, right after dinner. You name it, Kinrad's there, and I'll put my money on him. To, to actually stomp it was the, the little double drop I did in Emory. Biggest error I think I had on the whole trip would have been the, the endless tranny jump on Rose Hill and Camlin floating through the air and then the tires touched down and it was pretty wild. I was, I was proud of finally doing a, a 360 into uh, Ford Shepard. We've all been trying it on different levels and different occasions, and he fully stuck it. Kudos to him. were heard in the making of this TV show. <laughs>
on a bike. It was Dylan Trombley. Pretty hard to dispute that. The guy's just going off. The guy's so innovative and so creative and so technically sound. It is just mind-boggling to watch, and I'm sure all the viewers are saying the same thing with each passing week. Basically, I'd put them right up there with Darren Chase as top riders in North America. That's it, that's it. The most progressive rider on the trip was definitely Dylan. He was progressing at an astronomical rate daily. Yeah, Dylan progresses so fast, so fast at anything he wants to do. I admire him for that. You can put that guy in any situation and he'll probably come up with something new and kooky. I think the favorite trick I saw him pull was riding up the, the wedge ramp. Pulls a 360 into a manual and then goes all the way around the deck and comes back and he goes to drop off the deck. And it was pretty cool because the manual was not going in a straight line. Favorite street riding for me would have been in Calgary for sure. Just learned a few things, trying to do some grinding and, and fun stuff as everyone saw me crash and trying to do my grinds. Finally got him though. Are saying they didn't progress that much because there wasn't that much time just to progress and practice because it was like wake up, travel to the spot, film, and then leave. It was kind of just give her and uh, see how it goes. trick that you want to get and you can't just walk away so you got to stick something that you want to do or else it'll be haunting you for the rest of your life. Hey, your front wheel's not touching the ground. the bus? Uh, a little bit worried, yeah, but I'm voting Darren off. See that his jock strap on my bed. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> if Darren's got to go then. <laughs> Dylan's probably the shadiest dude I know. <laughs> I don't think you can even put Dylan into words. You have to meet the guy. No, I don't even know if meeting. You can't really judge him on a first impression. You got to hang out with Dylan and know him. He's a funny guy and he's got his own quirks like nobody else. He's amazing to watch and he's my favorite guy to ride a bike with. Hopefully I'll be riding my bike with Dill for years to come. I know I've got a, a lot of ideas from Dylan and Sean. Those kids are freaks and uh, they definitely inspired me in many different ways. And uh, I hope I was able to inspire some of the other guys in some of my different ways. Same thing up and over anything you can imagine, but he'll throw a bar spin or a X up or a no footer or something in there. It just never stops with him. You always got to keep your eye on him. 
as soon as you stop watching him, he does the craziest stuff and he doesn't even know, know that he's doing it. Why did you give Dylan the wheel? Why not? Funny. Yeah, I like Dylan's gonna pull in there. <laughs> Dill, do you know what you're doing? I wouldn't give him my change back. He's a shady bus driver. Whoa! No, stop, 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 stop. What I hit? <laughs> what I hit? Something. Let someone good drive. <laughs> hey, man, if you're gonna drive, you get to make your own decisions. Yeah, that's where he went wrong. <laughs> A bunch of guys who knew each other at the start of this, but weren't exactly the best of friends, didn't know each other that well. Hanging around with everyone and having some fun and laughing a lot, a lot of laughs on the trip. I think that was the highlight. Pretty psyched how we all kind of clicked and got along and were able to rip it up and have good party nights. I think that was the most fun for me. Watched a lot of videos, lots. I brought stacks of videos from my house. Uh, talked by the time. Watching videos? Watching yeah. videos, getting psyched. It would have been nice to eat something different than bagels. I uh, can't eat bagels anymore. <laughs> Um, chicken feet? Would, uh, would everyone be down with some chicken feet? Right on. Sweet. <laughs> That's nice. gross. A dollar ninety-three. Oh, I got feet. pork feet. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just having a little barbecue out here by the skate park. Chicken, you know, chilling out, having a good time in the skate park. Oh yeah, there we go. Reminence of Sean's birthday. Oh, we've had so many wild nights that they kind of just blur into one now. Can we party? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been a good party. <laughs> I don't remember. When we first showed up on the bus and it was just spotless and looking prime, you'd never imagine it with the ginch hanging over all the railings and people's socks everywhere. It was pretty stinky, pretty dirty. By the end, I just wanted to get off it. I think we all wanted to get off it. It was a little tough cruising by Dylan's bed because I don't think Dylan did laundry on the whole trip. His white socks were as brown as brown gets. Definitely, next year's going to be different. Maybe have a little bit, bit of money to buy socks. <laughs> I used to make fun of my dad all the time growing up. I thought my dad was such a wanker because all he wore was black socks. But. You know, as you get a little older, you get a little wiser, and you start to realize that your old man's not such a doofus. And... You start to realize that tube socks are the only way, because I got Jer hooked on tube socks. Pull those up. Sean, show us the tube socks. I got the gray tube socks. I got medium length tube, tubage. I'm hooking everyone up. Yeah. <laughs> it's a new company I'm starting. It's called uh, Tube Socks. <laughs> Time to start hitting the jumps. So I really have some fun. My favorite dirt jump on the whole tour probably would have had to have been golden for sure. I've never hit hit jumps that big. It was a really good time. It's nice to try and start stepping up the dirt jumping a little bit because those things were huge. <laughs> Ranch and Golden was definitely the funnest single spot I got to ride on the whole trip. 
It was killer. It was the best thing I've ever ridden in my life. We spent a day and a bit there, and I could spend a month and a bit there. Joe? No. no, I'm just playing. I know, I'm just joking. Oh. Yeah, I'm just joking too. <laughs> I'm just playing. There's this joking. What's going on? I don't know. I thought, I thought really we were making a TV show here. Yeah. Isn't it supposed to be like all serious and no fun? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, it's going to pop out. No, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I would probably have to give the best jumps to Byron's yard, just simply because they were the most fun, and uh, you know everyone was able to play and have tons of fun on it, and that's what it's about, is just having tons of fun. jumps and Kamloops were really cool because there's all kinds of variations and all kinds of different lines and so many different jumps. Big jumps, little jumps, little pimples, the whole bit. Mike. <laughs> How are you? Oh, fantastic. You dropped your lens cap. Good morning. How are you? Guest riders are really good. They take some of the pressure off of us. I mean, after you've been riding for 40 days, you're pretty beat and your body's sore. And when you pick up somebody fresh and that's super keen, I think it psychs everybody else up on the trip. Yeah, you little punks, get the bikes loaded. <laughs> yes, sir. They were all good in their own ways. I really liked uh, Larry from Roslyn. Larry was super funny. The best guest we had was definitely Lunchbox Larry from Roslyn. I guess you guys gotta call me Leaping Larry now. He just brought so much fun to the trip. He wore the mullet the whole time when we were in Boston, just keeping everyone loose, having tons of fun. He just reminds you why we all do it, you know, because it's so much fun. <laughs> Hold on, this will be just fair. Here, Phil. I was done. Everyone brought a lot of good energy to the tour, but uh, no one did like Daver did. Favorite guest rider was Daver um, by. I, by hair. This is Dave. I jumped over a bus lengthwise, <laughs> Fleming. He definitely brings stoke to anyone he's around and he fires you up and gets you going. So, let's go jumping. Deaver was a lot of fun. That guy's a riot. <laughs> I just like a sense of humor. I think he's a funny dude. Deaver rides a hardtail without any brakes on it whatsoever. Not the fact that he doesn't use his brakes, he just doesn't have any brakes, period. There's no lever to even decide to squeeze at the last second. That's just crazy. The guy's a freaking maniac. I don't understand how he's riding around with no brakes on that. I have no other explanation for Daver's antics other than he's Canadian and he's from Calgary. <laughs> I, mean, I just don't know why somebody would ride with no brakes. <laughs> I don't get it. Daver is a breed of his own, that's for sure. Matt Brooks and Danny are shredders. Good hooking up with Darren Bearcloth from the island. He, uh, he showed us some stuff, busted some moves. Bearcloth on the island, it was rad to watch. I've never seen anything like that before. That was awesome. 
Kurt Lindemark is a ripper. He was good to hang out with him. He's a super overall good guy. All the guest riders were great. Scott Fieldhouse is cool. Homie, that's my trail. <laughs> I mean, all the guest riders were wicked to have on the show. Thank them all for coming out and hanging out with us and doing it. Wish I could join you guys for the rest of the tour, but uh, no luck. Thanks for showing up. Drop in. <laughs> the best trail we rode on the whole trip was hands down the Monster and Mr. Skinny in Caslo on our Nelson mission. They are the funnest trails that there is, period. It, it's all downhill, but it is just so much fun. The Monster has some, some wicked flow, fun, tr fun stunts and everything on it. It's a really good time. I think that's an understatement. I think that's the funnest trail I've ever ridden, period. Darren just bringing all of the street and everything to the out into his trails and that. It's good on him for doing that. I tried to do the same a little this summer myself, but uh, Darren definitely, definitely really has that worked out. Bob Byron is one of the easiest guys to get along with on the bus right off the bat. Oh, I found his sense of humor was super funny. I think it brought a lot to the bus, keeping it super lighthearted all through the trip. Ooh. Help! Help! What's happening here? Hey, bad A. Let's ride. One of the days that really stands out in my mind was riding in Rossland. The riding in Rossland is really real, it's really natural. Um, the trails there are so much fun to ride. They're not built up with all these crazy stunts and everything. It's just real riding. The best man-made by hand trails, I'd say, would, would be the, the trails that Larry took us on in Rossland. Rossland has some of the best flowing trails around, that's for sure. craziest riding I would have to say would be in Williams Lake, the trail that Kurt Lundemark took us on. Kurt brings us up to the edge of this big rubble slope at the base of a big cliff and, and we're standing there asking him where we're going to ride and he says, what do you mean we're right where, this is the trailhead right here. And he just jumps on his bike and starts riding away and we're thinking, okay, well, all right, let's give it a try. It was just the gnarliest, tech, most technical riding I've ever had to do. It's it was fun, super challenging and a lot of fun. My story today is uh, never let Sean use my bike again because uh, he did a nice header, big flailer down the mountain and my bike went for a 40 foot cliff ride or something. Like it hasn't done that before. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Are you okay? Oh, yeah, I am all good. Whoa, ah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'm shutting her down. For sure the hardest part was uh, just getting up and doing it every day and just riding at that hard. By the time you hit the, the 40th day, you're, you're a little bagged, you're a little bit tired. Stamina-wise, trying to stay on every day and ride every day was easily the hardest part of the tour. I'm pretty psyched on how I came out. I'm just a little bit battered and sore. I usually get wrecked on little stuff you don't even think about. I've had problems since Calgary with my ankles. Uh, I just rolled off a rock wrong. My ankle's been purple for a month now. So I gotta get some problems addressed when I get home and hopefully get taken care of in physio. I tweaked my knee out. I was in a lot of pain for the whole trip after Calgary. 
took a few good crashes, but nothing that sent me to the hospital, nothing that kept me off my bike for more than a few days. Uh, another bruise back there. Me too. Uh, a little bit on the elbows. Carpet. Put me in the game, coach. I'm ready. hurts, my wrist is sore, I bruised my hip yesterday, my knee feels a little bit sprained, but other than that, I feel alright. I think I broke my toe. This one! I'm always hurt, man, and I always say, I don't, I don't need this protection, I'll be fine. I'm having trouble walking and I can't sit. My back is in a lot of pain, and I can barely walk. My finger's pretty sore. I think I dislocated it a couple times. I bruised my foot really badly. There's it right there. Sprained my wrist. Then I slipped in the skate park and smacked my uh, hip and elbow. But what you gonna do? Uh, ride harder. So I'm just gonna wear my full body armor 24/7. It's not coming off. It's gonna be. It's gonna become part of my skin. <laughs> my boys met my seat. Ow. When the big helmet comes on, you know that means trouble. It's time to mess up. Definitely the worst tasting dirt. My lip just grinded down and I came to a stop on my lip on my nose. And he was in massive bubbles and all sorts of goo coming up his craziest crash of the trip was definitely mine. I think it's pretty safe to say that that was crazy. I'm now the proud owner of three steel plates and 19 screws in my heels. The surgeon says that I'm going to make a full recovery and I'm going to be able to do everything that I did before the accident. I'm just going to take everything that I have and I'm going to work with it. Positive attitude and I'm going to try and be proactive and uh, 
keep trying to have as much fun as I can. It surpassed all my expectations. It's going to be really weird to go back to, <laughs> to the normal world after this. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I don't know if it is. I don't know. Yeah. Fun, ha fun having that. <laughs> Take three. Hello, I think my name is Darren Butler. How did we start this trip? OK, it is dead. Um, blah, 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 blah. Why, 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 why do girls find me sexy? That's gotta be, it's gotta be the dreads. Where the f are we? Golden, golden, yeah. <laughs> The big dirt lines and. Hello. 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 <laughs> Get all wet and dirty. <laughs> <laughs> what episode is this? Drop In has been brought to you by Toyota Canada and PinkBike.com. Share the ride.